All right, so all of the videos so far have mostly talked about um, internal processes in the Earth, right? So we talked about plate tectonics and, and formations of rocks and things like that. Um, but now the rest of these videos are going to talk about external processes, right? Things happening on the surface of the Earth that sculpt our rocks into landscapes. So the first thing we're going to talk about is mass wasting. Um, so here we have a picture of a hillside, um, I believe this is in the Philippines, um, and this is a hillside that had a big landslide on it, right? We can see the big landslide scar uh, right here, right, uh, coming down this, this mountain slope. Um, and a landslide is an example of mass wasting. So mass wasting is basically the movement of sediment um, under the influence of gravity, right? So we're moving stuff down slope from high to low. Um, and actually a lot of geology, a lot of surface process geology is really about moving sediments from high places to low places, right? Plate tectonics is pushing things up and creating mountains and then our, uh, our different methods of erosion are tearing things down. Um, so this landslide is a factor of several things, right? We have a steep slope, so we have lots of potential energy to bring sediments down. Um, this is uh, also in a, in a region that gets a lot of rain, so there's probably a lot of water that can saturate sediments and can bring them down. Um, you can also have things like deforestation. If you remove vegetation from a slope, vegetation holds things in place with roots. Uh, so a number of factors can cause mass wasting. Um, these things are often very sudden and um, very fast moving, and they can cause a lot of damage to life and property. Now here is a, uh, an example of a mass wasting event uh, that occurred right here in Colorado, and we'll probably see this uh, when we're on our trip this summer. Um, so this happened on Grand Mesa. So Grand Mesa is right out here in western Colorado, and it's a big flat-topped flat mountain. Um, so in Grand Mesa, we have uh, basically we have a layer of very hard rock called basalt. So I'm going to draw that here. So we have a layer of basalt, um, and then it's it's it overtops some uh, layers of softer rock. So we've got some sedimentary layers underneath some some shales and sandstones and things that are much softer than this than this hard basalt. Um, so we have very very steep slopes because this is a cap rock, right? This is a very hard rock that's protecting the softer rock, and and so we have a very steep slope. Um, now what happened? This happened in May of um, 2014. Uh, we had snowpack on top of the mountain. Top of this mountain is like uh, a 10 or 11,000 feet. So we still had a, a fair bit of snow, and then we had a very heavy rain event. Um, and that, that caused a tremendous amount of water to infiltrate into the rock and the soil, and so we had rocks kind of crumbling off the top of the plateau and then coming down. Uh, this thing, this is the scar of that, um, the, all the debris. That debris is 120 feet deep in spots, and this hole uh, from the top of the plateau up here down to the toe of this landslide is almost three miles. You can see uh, for scale, here's some roads. This is an active gas drilling well right there. Um, so this is a tremendously powerful event that happened you know, in a matter of minutes. And in fact, three people lost their lives and are, are buried in that slide. So uh, these things are tremendously powerful and uh, sometimes catastrophic events. Okay, so, so the way that uh, mass wasting works, um, so the movement of, of material downslope, any kind of unconsolidated material is basically under the influence of two factors, gravity and friction. Uh, so as gravity and friction counterbalance each other, we get you know a pile of unconsolidated material. Now the angle at which uh, material will form a slope um, is usually fairly constant depending on what material you have. Uh, so that angle is called the angle of repose because it's the angle at which sediments come to rest um, at that interface between gravity and friction. So if we have something like fine sand, fine sand almost always holds an angle somewhere around 35 degrees. Um, coarse sand, you can hold a steeper angle like 40 degrees. If you have angular pebbles, right, um, you can have an even steeper angle here. We have a 45 degree angle. And that's because if you have more angular particles, you have more uh, things in contact with each other, right? So if I have jagged particles, more of the surface area of those particles are in contact, so we have more friction holding them in place. If I have perfectly round particles or very smooth particles, there's less surface area being contacted between those, uh, so they can't hold as steep of a slope because there's less friction. 
Okay, the other in, uh, thing that influences um, angle of repose and mass wasting is water. So water molecules are polar, um, which means basically that they will stick to its water will stick to itself and water will stick to stuff. So you can see here this paper clip um, there the water molecules are sticking to the edges of the paper clip which is distorting the, the image in the water there. Um, so water is, is cohesive. Um, so if you have an example here if you have damp sand so it's got just a, you know a film of water in it because of that cohesion and adhesion of the water um, it sticks to itself it sticks to the grains of sand you can shape that sand to the really steep slopes right uh, you can make, build sand castles and things out of it now dry sand that doesn't have that water in between those particles of sand that's where you'll get a you know a slope maybe between 35 and 40 degrees um, but then if you had a lot of water uh, to the point where you no longer have um, cohesion between particles but you're lubricating uh, all those particles wet saturated sand will spill out all over the place and it holds a very shallow angle of repose um, so that's why when you add water to slopes if you add too much um, you can lubricate those particles and cause that slope to fail. The other thing is water adds a lot of weight. If you've ever gone on a backpacking trip uh, and you have to carry water, you know how heavy water is. So you can add a lot of water weight to that, to that sediment too and also get the slope to fail. Here's an example of a talus slope. I think we talked about talus slopes when we talked about uh, weathering. Um, but we can see here's all those unconsolidated material. This is holding a pretty steep slope. This stuff is probably weathered off this cliff face up here. Um, and these are pretty angular, jagged particles, so they can hold a pretty steep slope. Now we, or we uh, classify mass wasting events and we describe them based on two things, uh, the velocities, the speed at which the material is moving down slope, uh, and then what kind of material you have, you know, whether you have rock or whether you have soil or unconsolidated material uh, and so on. So for instance here we see rock, um, if it's moving really fast like off a cliff we have a rock fall, um, if it's sliding down slope we have a rock slide and so on. Uh, if you have unconsolidated material um, like soil, uh, that gets saturated, we call that an earth flow, um, or if we have a lot more water, we call that a debris flow that might have some big chunks of rock and things like that in it. Um, and we also have some interesting things like slumps um, and debris slides and, and things like that. So uh, sometimes we get slope failures uh, basically because slopes get over steepened. Um, and we do this a lot, humans do this a lot, uh, when we start building in places with very steep slopes. So for instance, you want to build a house here, um, and we're on a hillside. Um, so the hillside's too steep to build on, so maybe we want to make a terrace. And so what's often done is we, we take this slope, the original slope would have been something like this, and uh, we cut away to make a terrace, so we remove material from in here, and we use that fill, we usually use that fill to build out the terrace this way out here. Um, and that's okay, these things can be pretty stable for a long time, but if you have something like an unusually heavy rainfall event or an earthquake or something that's going to move that uh, material, what you get is this rotational slide like this, that over -steep steepened slope will fail, usually down at the, at the base here, and all that stuff will come tumbling underneath, and that's called a slump. Here's a, an example of a rock slide. So sometimes we'll get, uh, if we have a, a rock layer that's porous, right, that can have, uh, that water can saturate, so something like um, sandstone. And let's say we have another layer underneath of shale, which is impermeable. Um, if you have a bunch of, of water coming down and it saturates that, it can lubricate the, the bedding planes between those sedimentary layers, uh, causing the surface to rupture and fail and uh, come out here. Sometimes that can bury highways and, and houses and things and people get very unhappy. A debris flow is another uh, really common example of mass wasting. This happens a lot where you have seasonal rainfall, so heavy seasonal rainfall. So a place like Southern California, um, we have steep mountains in some place like the San Gabriel Mountains, and we have um, so we have these steep canyons, 
and we often get heavy winter rains, right? So, the, so we get a lot, really heavy rain event. It washes a lot of mud and debris into these canyons, into these channels, and it'll flow out. Because it's, it's contained within a steep, narrow canyon, the stuff can move really, really fast because you're pouring a lot of material through a narrow canyon. Um, and these things can move very, very fast, sometimes 60 or 100 miles an hour, carrying a lot of debris, and they're very, very dangerous. Now, if it comes out the mouth of the canyon, uh, that debris is going to slow down, uh, and it's going to spill out all over the place um, and, and cause, again, a really big mess. Now, another example of mass wasting that's not quite as fast and dramatic is called soil creep. And as the name implies, it's actually a pretty slow process. Um, if you see something like this where you have a slope and you see a lot of tilting, right? So we have tilted power lines here. Um, we might have some tilted fences. Uh, buildings might get cracks in their foundations and, and trees will curve like that. Um, it means that the slope is moving and it's moving fairly slowly. We see this a lot in soils. So let me draw how soil creep works. Um, so let's say we have a slope right here. Um, and let's say you, you have a particle of soil on the surface of that slope right here. And if we're in a place that uh, freezes in the winter and thaws in the summer, or even freezes sometimes overnight and thaws in the, in the daytime. Um, so if we have this soil, let me put some ice in here. So let's say we get a layer of ice. We have water in between particles of soil and that, that water freezes, that ice gets in there. And so we build up a layer of ice and that soil particle moves up. Right? It's now suspended by that layer of ice. And it moves up perpendicular to the slope. Right, It's moving straight up. Now if, if temperatures warm and that ice thaws, that soil particle is going to fall back down, but it's going to fall back down under the influence of gravity. So it's going to come down farther down slope than it originally started. And so if we have freeze and thaw over and over again, that particle is going to move up when it freezes and down when it thaws. And then eventually, that particle is going to be migrating down slope like this. And so it, it's, a, it's a slow process depending on how much freezing and thawing you get. Um, but the net movement of that soil particle is down slope. So if all your soil particles are doing this, your slopes are moving really, um, really slowly, and uh, but consistently. And so you can identify slopes that are that are doing this uh, if you, if they have trees on it, and the trees are shaped like this, called a pistol budded tree. Um, What's happening here is the slope is moving, so the tree gets tilted, but trees are growing and they can grow, they can put more wood on one side of the stem than the other so they can correct this growth and grow back up straight. Um, so we get these pistol budded trees on slopes where soil moves.